What is up, everybody? Welcome on into week 11 of NFL action here in NFL Fever 2003. We're taking a look at the 2002-2003 season, but if the random or the rosters got completely randomized and it was a fantasy draft before it, we just kind of see what happens. Every week you can tune in to watch three games of NFL action, so be sure to scroll down, subscribe, and ring that bell if you'd like to see more of this kind of content. Today, we have some, uh, we're, we're in the back half, we're in that final stretch, the final seven weeks 11, 12, 13, 14, yeah, seven weeks of uh, of the season where the playoff picture is starting to take shape. We saw the Packers and the Lions last week, a big injury to the Green Bay quarterback, and I did not know at the time, but there was an injury to the Lions quarterback. Lions quarterback, I believe, is back this week, and they are playing the New York Jets, who we saw their quarterback, Donovan McNabb, go down with injury earlier in the season. So we'll see how the, those two teams are looking in our first game. Then we have two matchups of AFC playoff contenders. We have New England taking on Oakland, both teams, I believe, 6-3. and three. Jacksonville and Houston, they are tied for second in the AFC South. So let's get started. Let's go to, uh, excuse me, let's go to Detroit. Somewhere. There it is. Are they literally like three games in a row? Okay. Uh, we're going to take a look at, we're, uh, we're going to, to Detroit, um, allow the CPU to fix the team, allow CPU to fix the team. All right. And here we go. I try not to fix or, uh, try not to show two teams or teams in two consecutive weeks, but we are getting through that to that playoff point where we are going to see kind of the same teams and watch their road to, uh, road to the playoffs. Welcome to Ford so welcome to Ford Field, everybody. Two five and four squads, an AFC and an NFC uh, playoff bubble team. And here we go, Detroit at home. Again, we saw them last week. Green Bay crushed them, but they did suffer a significant injury to their quarterback. The Packers did. The Packers, I believe, played the Vikings today. Kurt Warner, he's back. He was not in last week's game. He'd been out for three weeks or so. I can pull up the footage. Kind of double check. Oh, I meant to do the phone. Delete that. Oh, what are we? What are we looking for here? We are looking for week number. 12 or sorry week number 10 i apologize i'm not looking for a future video here um how, where do we we looked at the injury report oh, that, okay so i think i found myself looking for the injury report uh, injuries now Brian Greasy suffered a hand injury. He's pretty much done for the season. He's out for nine weeks, but that was week 10. So that would put him back maybe before the Super Bowl if the Packers are able to survive that far. I'm talking a lot. <laughs> First down. back finding a receiver on the outside up near the 40 yard line back in week eight the lions quarterback kurt warner suffered a hip injury so this is i believe his first game back maybe his second game back no his first game back i apologize the, the i was thinking of the other the other guy did i not look i thought i looked at donovan mcnab i actually i had to look at the i had to this is the second week in a row that I've had to look at footage. I could watch myself watch footage. Donovan McNabb back in the starting lineup. Priest Holmes, Eric Moulds, Ike Hilliard. <laughs> Every time I see the bottom left guy or Toski, I just I think of uh, Preston Lacey from Jackass. Every time I see his picture. Got the Christmas sweater out for the month of December, so get ready to see that for all of the videos this month. Well, until 
Tough Christmas. Intercepted by the Lions lawyer Malloy. Played for the Patriots at the time. Won at least a Super Bowl, maybe two. Kurt Warner on the offensive side with Terrell Davis, Muhammad, Heinz Ward, Mushin, Munchin, Mushin, Muhammad. to the right side tried to make a move but it'll be dropped for a loss of one maybe two been a fantastic day of nfl action in real life um was able to go home from work a little bit early so we take a look at the jets starting defense teddy bruski in the middle of that linebacking core playing for the dreaded evil new york jets um i wonder who the patriots think is their most like their their biggest rival because over the last 20 years i don't think it's really has it really been competitive? Uh, well, until the Bills. But that was, I mean, still after the Brady era. It doesn't matter. Oh, my goodness. Interceptions exchanged. Ken Irvin with a pick. And both quarterbacks. Just, just trading bad passes. Uh, but anyway, I was able to come home uh, from work early. Caught the last probably quarter or so of the Vikings game. Maybe a little less than a quarter. It was very good. Was flipping back and forth between the the Seahawks game I watched like a smidge First of, down. and the uh, the well, I caught bits and pieces of the Seahawks game, and the the big one, the Bengals and the Colts. Oh, the Bengals and the Colts. The Bengals. Oh my goodness! A free rush. It looked like they were setting up a screen, but nothing doing there. Bengals Chiefs, terrific game, back and forth. The Bengals have won three consecutive against Kansas City and all of those within a calendar year. We got Jamar Chase back, so that is good news. Second down at 18. Goes to the left, picks up a few yards. Third down and long. Dropping back, looking. Rolls to his left. He has all kinds of green. Oh, he throws to a receiver coming back to the ball, but it's incomplete. Donovan McNabb had all the green he could have asked for in front of him. He just had to pull it down and run. He has the speed, the agility to get out on the edge. Instead throws one of those weird off-the-back foot passes fading away. Almost a good punt, but it does drop into the end zone. So it'll be a touchback following the interception. Lions back out for their second drive. Not a smooth start for either team so far. We had a tie in the NFC East, which had at one point had the entirety of the NFC East in the playoffs. I don't know if the Seahawks' victory alters that at all. Seattle beat the Rams, which makes it hard for the Packers to like make a real good push at it. But I do think the NFC East has a lot of teams playing each other over the next couple of weeks. Like a lot of individual matchups. I want to say... I don't know my phone. Fart. Second down. Ball up. It, must, it might be the Giants. The Giants, I think, the last five games of their season is against division opponents, including two of them against Washington, which is kind of wild. Second 
So that division could get like a little bit messy. Obviously, you know, just kind of do what you can, win the games that you have in front of you. Green Bay's off next week, so. I think next week the Vikings might be able to wrap up the AFC or NFC North. Maybe 11 and two with a victory over the Lions. That's a nice catch. The rare time we see the, uh, the receiver actually run a good route. Nice adjustment to the ball, and that's a completion up near the 45 yard line. in a couple weeks. Yeah. Ooh, Rams Packers on a Monday night. Yikes. <laughs> oh, man. Schedule makers were just salivating at that and whew, be the team looking good. Deep down the right side. Finds a receiver. He's inside the 20 to 10. He's going to be tripped up inside that 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Lions. That's a big, big improvement in this game. I talk about it probably every week. Just having that one little animation in there to not make those those deep throws where the receiver is about five yards in front and automatic First touchdown. Down. Talked about the Packers schedule a couple weeks ago as we see a run for no gain, maybe a loss of one on the play. Uh, Green Bay could really only afford to lose one, like maybe two games. They kind of did that right out of the gate. How old are these? Ball batted down. Batted down in the end zone. Nice defensive play by New York. For some reason, these records are all wrong. Whatever. Green Bay's playoff hopes technically still mathematically alive, but I would not be surprised if they get eliminated within the next week or so, depending on who wins. NFC playoff picture is a little bit murky. It's even it's weird that the Packers are still mathematically alive with the. Uh, so we see a rollout, throws short of the end zone. Considering there's three games below 500. They've been, what, three games? Four games off, right? All right, so we will see the fourth and goal field goal attempt at the, uh, after this break. End of the first quarter, we have a goose egg game going. Lions likely get to score three points. 317 time of possession, 18 total yards to 70 plus. Big throw to uh, Terrell Davis. What did they say? Adam Vinatieri? Kick is up and kick is good, and that is indeed Adam Vinatieri, who is number two, weirdly enough. He's four. Then you have the abysmal AFC South, or NFC South. Anyway. Terrific day of football. Very excited about it. I don't think the Monday night game is very good tomorrow. The Sunday night game is kind of weird because it's the Colts taking on the Cowboys. And we hired Jeff Saturday as our coach for some reason. Most important, most important part of today is that the Packers beat the Bears. They got a blocked field goal. They, they not only beat the Bears, which is uh, First down. which is important. Beating the Bears, always good. Green Bay could go like 2-15, and 15, just wins, wins against the Bears. Big thumbs up. But, interestingly enough, Green Bay beat Chicago and surpassed them for the winningest or most regular season wins in NFL history, which is pretty wild. We have a hold against the Jets. It will be first down and 20 from the 14th. Throws. 
receiver on the outside, makes the catch, just past the 20, gain of six on the play. Pass. I'll set up third down. Again, all kinds of room on the right side. He just throws it away. What is this AI? It doesn't make any sense. That's exactly what you want. I mean, that looks like a garbage play you would draw in Madden, draw up in Madden 2004 to just clear out the defense and let Michael Vick run for 30 yards. That was a first down run. And the second time we've seen McNabb turn down the opportunity at a big gain. We see a nice return, but a diving, and number 87 stops that one short of midfield. Lions will take over with a three-point lead. Interestingly enough, this series did stop before Madden even had the rights to it, uh, or had the exclusive rights. I wonder if the... Warner throws back across his body over the middle of the field on the helmet logo. And we tackle for... No, oh, that's it, okay. <laughs> tackle for a uh, medium game. Did just uh, NFL Fever, Wikipedia, American football video game published and developed by Microsoft Game Studios. Oh, Microsoft sold the series to Ubisoft, or Ubisoft in February of 2005. Interesting. Following the release of their 2004 professional sports titles, all of them were discontinued, including NBA Inside Drive and, and, and NHL Rivals. Interestingly enough, the Top Spin series is still around, under 2K, or was for a while. A little longer, I guess. Huh. Warner tries to drop back, but a nice defensive play by the Jets to send an extra blitzer off the left side. Looked like a bit of a delayed blitz, and it paid off, as that'll be a loss of five. Joe Jarrah vicious. Second and 16, Warner drops back, fires to the right, finds a wide open receiver who gets out of the reaches of a diving defender, past the first down marker. Looks like he just waited for that window to open. And the name we just mentioned, Jarrah Vicious making the catch there. First and 10, Detroit at the two minute warning. Kind of surprising how quickly this game is going by. Hines Ward. Throws into a little bit of traffic. Looked like a couple of players ran into each other and that might have thrown off the timing of that throw. It's about a step off from being a uh, completed pass. Goes to the left, finds a receiver inside the 20, down to about the 19. That'll be a five yard game. 
third down coming up. Oh, I'm scared to move the controller. I want to put my arm on the table, but if that controller bumps that cord again, we'll lose connection. Third down and six. Drops back, throws over to his left, and that's a little uh, float pass near the first down marker. I imagine we'll have to take a look at it. Bring in the, bring in the chains. Oh, they're gonna give him fourth and inches. Didn't even bring him out. Out of Vinatieri's one for one, and the Jets' defense two for two now with a bend but don't break approach. They will hold on to this ball for the rest of the play clock. Twenty-five seconds. Six nothing Detroit. Feels like a dominant six nothing lead. I expected more from the Jets, frankly, with uh, Donovan McNabb back in the starting lineup, but hasn't really shown uh, shown anything worth watching so far. There goes the ball. From the one. Runs it toward the middle of the field and meets the first defender he sees and falls down immediately. What a great return. in the backfield again at about the 16 yard line. That's a huge loss. Under a minute to go. Okay, he was gonna try and get rid of the ball, but just couldn't. I'm really curious to see the, uh, the Vikings Packers score following the injury. Also, the Packers did not have a like total like a, enough players on their team, so I did have to have the computer do that. Intercepted, the Lions picking him off for a second time, but he fumbled the ball, and he's going to be off. That's a touchdown. One of the most unbelievable plays we have ever seen in this game, this franchise, whatever you want to call it. They're showing the wrong stats. That is a uh, an interception to fumble to touchdown. Clean pick, just unbelievable turn of events. We had one that was pretty wild, but I don't remember, I think it was the Bills. Unbelievable, how did they How did they score that? Anybody get yards for that or is it just kind of like, whatever. That is a monumental turn right there. The Jets look dead in the water. Detroit forces another turnover. With good field position, a couple of timeouts, three timeouts, 35 to 40 seconds. But no, he fumbled the ball, picked up for a touchdown. Mind boggling stuff here in the uh, random rosters universe. Ward, not a great return. Didn't even get to the 20. First and 10. The offensive line to step up and take it to the defense. With this field position, they need to control the line score.
First and 10 with 28 seconds to go. Warner drops back, throws to the left side. Loss of three on the play. And the clock will continue to move. Terrible play. Actually going to give him a loss of four. 19 seconds to go following the timeout. Kurt Warner drops, rolls to the right, fires off his back foot. Receiver running back toward the ball, overran it. Or maybe there was a different def a receiver trying to get the ball. That was a terrible play. Side, finds a receiver who breaks the tackle. He's off to the races up to the 35 yard line on the right side. Enough time to take a timeout. There will be one last timeout from Detroit. Hines Ward making a man miss. seconds to go single back set okay gonna hand the ball to Terrell Davis with no all right interesting decision there it's a nice way of putting it we've reached halftime with the score the Jets seven the Lions six So nobody got any yards off the big play. The Jets with 18 total yards of offense, but huge uh, turnover. Ward calls it in from the end zone. Ward up to the 20, gets tripped up by his shoelaces and was almost broken for a big one. The defender that he was going towards was on his back. Oh my goodness. Stretches it to the sideline. Number one kind of looked like like a turtle on his back. Like, oh, help! First and ten. From the twenty-yard line. Lions with first possession in the second half. Hand off right side. Well blocked. Unnecessary uh, side steps and shakes. Ball off of the middle, puts a shoulder through a defender and picks up four. Oh, looking for a screen. We don't see a ton of screen plays run, but I think those are kind of the broken plays in this game. Ideally, you kind of just throw it off your back foot and a little lob to give the receiver time to turn around or the running back time to turn around. In the previous game, it was the stretch plays, the toss plays that didn't work. We've seen a couple of screens that have just been disastrous. That was a nine yard loss. Throw it near the first down marker, but it'll be incomplete. Good defense by the Jets. Wow. 
half step later, and he probably has a block. Dan Straczynski with a 47-yard punt. Not a terrible run back. Pitch to the left side. Finds a nice seam. Well blocked on the outside and immediately into Lions territory after about a 15 yard gain. <laughs> Running back number 45. I did notice some of the Jets' numbers on the defense were a little bit weird for this era. They've uh, obviously they've loosened the rules on the numbers. That's why you see like single digits on the defensive side of the ball. It does. It really doesn't matter. But uh, to me, I don't. Care. First and ten. That should have been an interception. The Lions defender put himself nearly in perfect position. Kind of outran the receiver on his route there. Wow, wide open receiver. He's inside the 20. 10 5 touchdown. Priest Holmes, a 48 yard touchdown reception. His first reception of the game, and the Jets have, a little, uh, have some life here. We've seen the Jets defenders lunge at the ankles of the Lions receivers or runners as they're getting close to that end zone and giving their defense a chance to bend but not break and only give up a field goal. Didn't see that from the Lions defense on that one and they give up a touchdown. 2.41 to go here in the third quarter. It's an eight-point lead for the New York Jets. deep in the end zone up near the 20 with a spin move first and 10 if they can get points on this drive it'll give them all kinds of confidence Finds a receiver near the first down marker. Did he make it? He got it. I'll give it to him by the slimmest of margins, first and ten. Pitch to the left side. Met in the backfield, but gets out of the tackle. He's going to turn this into a big game. Makes another man miss, and he'll be taken down at the 45 yard line. That looked like it was a doomed play at the start, but nifty moves by Terrell Davis to make something out of nothing. Well blocked on the outside. <laughs> Somebody just driving a car back there. Please tell Mr. Warner his hot dogs are here. Forty-two to go, third quarter. Throws. Warner with a nice find. That'll be another first down for Detroit. First 
to ten. They're going with a 34 defense. I can hear my phone vibrating as well. It's a nice run up the middle, just right up the gut. What, a solid seven yards there? Oops. So second and two from the 35. I'll be curious to see if Detroit, should they score a touchdown, do they go for two? There's no real reason to kick an extra point in this scenario. If you make it, you're down one. If you miss it, you're down two. Either way, a field goal still gives you the lead. A made two-point just evens the game up. I think it's a no-brainer two-point, like, going for two. But who knows? This game sometimes just doesn't have a brain. Run off the right side, and we're going to probably have a hold here on the offense. That's what I'm going to guess. First and 20, an absolutely brutal penalty. One penalty for 10 yards, each of them a hold. Offset eye, and we will get one play. Maybe some confusion there in the backfield. We almost saw, it looked like we were about to see another Terrell Davis magician trick there, magic trick. Tried to keep his balance, no such luck. Second down and 19 or so coming up after the break. 14-6, Jets over the Lions. Lions really should be winning this game. But that Jets defense has been tremendous about holding them to field goals. It's another running play. He ran, ran right in, right into the lineman. Couldn't have run into him more directly. And there was some room to work. I don't know that he's going to get a first down if, if he goes right, whether he goes left or right behind that block. But. Third down and 18. It's a nice find. Pass the first down marker. He's going for a score. Mushin Muhammad, three receptions, 50 yards. His first touchdown of the afternoon. We have a two-point game here, folks. I don't know why it seems like the defenders sometimes are so slow. They, like, keep up with them, and then the receiver catches the ball. And they just, they like get hit with a cheat code or something. All right, here we go. This is what we want to see. Two point conversion. Offset eye formation, receiver split out to the right side. They're gonna fake the pass or fake the run. And it's gonna be an incomplete pass. So no good, 14 to 12 our score. Kick is away. At the goal line, or one yard deep up to the 20. And hits the 25 yard line. Not a bad return at all. Any cheat codes for NFL fever? I can never remember if I've looked this stuff up. Throw. 
to run. <laughs> they move all kinds of dancing around back there. Look at the time of possession. Absolutely. It is wild that this game is the way it is. The Lions have done everything to win this game except for the fumble. I mean... McNabb finds a receiver. Tackled. Short of the 35-yard line. So, we actually have... Maybe something to look at. Hmm. There are teams you can unlock, and they might not be as exciting as I'm thinking that they are. Um, if you set your username to various things, you can get teams. Like you can unlock the thundering sheep or the tumbleweeds. The war elephants? Okay, all right. The crocs? Now, in my head, the dream is that these are like mascot teams, but I'm sure they're just specialty teams. Handoff, tries to find some room off that left side. No such luck. Good defensive stand by Detroit. And there are some uh, some stadiums you can unlock, but I wonder if you can if you can unlock multiple teams at a time. Because if you just set your username like user profile, theoretically you'd only be able to unlock one team at a time. Third down and inches. Detroit down by two. We have a good one to start off the day. He is not going to get it. He is not going to get that. Wow. You got to go for it here. We will uh, We'll get this play after the two-minute warning. 14-12 Jets. Every once in a while, it's better to be lucky than good. I feel like that's how this Jets team might feel after the... Uh, Wait, what? Why are they going for the... Why are they hunting the ball? This game is so dumb. They were going to go for it, and then the two-minute warning hit, and they're like, oh, just kidding. So now, they're going to get the ball back with no timeouts. You know what? Maybe Detroit deserves to lose this game. Ball for a gain of about two. Second down and eight. Should see a timeout here from the Lions, and that's what we see. Stop short of the line to gain. Another timeout here by Detroit. Drops back, fires, and that is an incomplete pass. That is going to save Detroit a timeout. I'm okay with the play call there. Oh, 
Oh my goodness. Oh, they're always so close. The Lions will get it first and 10 from the 20. One timeout in their back pocket. First and 10. Only needing a field goal. They need 60 yards. Maybe 50. I don't know. This game is weird about where it decides to kick field, kick field goals. Wow, he, they looked like they were setting up a screen. He's going to pull away from some defenders inside the 50 down to the 45. That, I thought, okay, so they're setting up a screen initially. And as soon as I saw that happen, I thought, uh-oh, this is bad. Because no screen play has worked. And then he just threw it down the field anyway. Found a matchup that they liked and enough zip on the ball to get there. Okay. 15 yards. I mean, that was a 35 yard gain. Well, and then a five yard loss. So that's not good. Hold on to that timeout. No reason to burn it here. Nineteen yards, I would say. Plenty of time. Can't take a sack again, obviously, but it's gonna run, throw, almost picked off. That is not what you want to see. I mean, we might might be getting to the point here where ten yards, fifteen yards. I mean, from the 40, it's like a 57-yard field goal. Oh, no! He's wide open in the middle of the field. He gets smashed inside the 20-yard line. Oh, they had it, and then some kind of confusion happened on the back end. Should actually, we'll take a look at that in the replay breakdown here. Football expert... Uh, Sean, your host here. Uh, we will take a look at the replay here. Just really quickly, um, you can see, for some reason, these like two defenders, I guess, kind of switch for no reason. I mean, they're exactly where they need to be. 22 is on 30. That's right what you want to see. This guy trails with him. Sure, fine, whatever. It's a one-on-one -on -one down the field. No big deal. But he they go to like rotate for some reason, and that leaves Terrell Davis wide freaking open. Big play. And the clock is moving here. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Game. Detroit at the buzzer. Wins 15 14. Your final a fantastic first game here. I wonder if there's a one second left. I think that maybe it's. I don't know. The game just seems kind of confused. There's a lot happening for it right now. 15 14, your final. And they did that without even taking a timeout, which is uh, probably the wildest part. They still had one in their back pocket, I believe. Mushin Muhammad. Four receptions, 85 yards, and a touchdown. There's a sack. McNabb and the Jets did not look great. Threw a couple interceptions. There's another one. This is the the big play of the game. Got up. Tackled immediately, fumbles the ball, and Eric Moulds runs it for a touchdown. An unbelievable play. Gave the Jets the lead, but it was not enough for them, unfortunately. Corner throwing an interception. I don't think either quarterback performed all that well today. Both teams obviously in much better position with their starting quarterbacks, Kurt Warner and uh, Donovan McNabb, respectively. 
but McNabb specifically looks pretty rusty. 100 total yards of offense for the Jets does not count the big play. Almost 300 for the Lions. Two turnovers each. And you see, uh, obviously, not obviously, you see the time of possession heavily in favor of the uh, Detroit Lions. So the Lions win by one, and we will head to, where are we going next? We're going out west to Oakland to check out the Patriots and the Raiders. Should be a couple of six and three teams here in the thick of the playoff race. AFC East meets AFC West. Uh, this would have been either the year of or the year after the uh, infamous tuck rule game. That could be an interesting, I'm sure people have done it before, but could be an interesting like what if. Was that for the AFC title? What if the Raiders played the uh, Rams, whoever, in the Super Bowl? That could be, that could be fun to look at. I can ask, well, we can look it up here. He takes his work very seriously. I think receiver Keenan McCardell is the complete package. He's as good as any wide receiver in the NFL. Tuck rule game, 2001. Thanks for that, Rod. Captains are at midfield. Let's head down for the coin toss. January 19th, 2002. Captain, what's your choice? He calls hands. It is The home team won the toss and elects to the season. Oh, the Patriots went on to defeat the Steelers 24 17 in the championship game. Okay. So that's like a that'd be a like kind of a two part what if that's that's really interesting actually. For some reason, I guess I always thought it were, there was more at stake, not just a, not like just a division game or whatever. But that was nice coverage on the opening kickoff. Uh, but welcome to Oakland. I was correct. Two teams, six and three, right in a big jumble of. Uh, so there's a couple of teams, three teams with seven wins, and then a lot of teams with six and five wins. I think the AFC is a little bit more competitive than the NFC as far as how like bunched they are. Some interesting divisions. We'll take a look at the standings after we get the scores uh, a little bit later in the show. First play for the Raiders is a run. Did not block well on the end there. I thought that was going to spring big for uh, Ricky Waters, but uh, no such luck. Left his block a little bit earlier. Mark Brunel, Ricky Waters. I for, I already forget who the receiver was. I was gonna I was gonna say it while it was on my mind. That is a good trio. That's a nice completion for a first down. It's the second play of the game. They got to start pressuring the quarterback already. He's a perfect one for one. Ty Law, the Patriots knew what they had with Ty Law. We'll take him back. Drops back, looks over the middle, finds a receiver and a completion for eight. Raiders won a good game over the Chargers, and much like last year, uh, really put a dent in the <clears throat> playoff hopes of the Los Angeles Chargers. I don't think the Raiders are even like in the hunt for the playoffs. I think they've already been eliminated. 
when they were showing the graphic, NFC playoff picture versus AFC playoff picture, there were a lot more teams in the NFC playoff picture, like including a three under 500 like Packers team. Uh, but the AFC only had two teams in the hunt, and that was the six and six Patriots and the six and six uh, Chargers. So we might be getting to a, a point of kind of just jostling for position. And this is something that I, I think has been has been a worry for me ever since they've even started talking about expanding the uh, the regular season. We're going to see a lot more rest games. If a team gets locked into a one seed, two seed, hell, if you get locked into a five seed, why risk injury to your players? The NFL is, is so great because they don't have a resting problem like some other sports do, and I'm not disparaging it or whatever i understand 82 games of basketball 162 games in baseball however many games in hockey that's a lot you're getting like you're gonna need some rest you need to relax chill out the nfl has bye weeks you know whatever um but i think you're gonna start to see that a lot a lot more frequently it was already a problem back in the peyton manning days when they were 14 and 0 Lost the last two games and they got immediately eliminated from the playoffs. So we'll uh, we'll see. I'm sure there will be plenty of good games. I'm sure that people will convince themselves that it was a good move, but I'm not I'm not so sure. So Vinny Testaverde, who. Uh, Known for being a jet. Snap your fingers for the musical joke. Playing for the Patriots. Warren Sapp. Playing for the Raiders. He ended up playing for Oakland. But that was a little bit later in his career. I see number 16, and for some reason I'm like, oh, Matt Castle. No one's ever thinking about Matt Castle. This game could be a playoff preview. Both teams are kind of in the middle portion of that. They'd be through like the three through six seed. Nice tackle. fullback run but he ran right into the defender what are you doing spin moving everything and just went nowhere but somehow still got a first down slow moving methodical drive here by the Patriots pitch to the right it's a big fumble a fumble so hard that it made the game lose frames the Raiders recover. It'll be first and 10 from the 45-yard line. the left side gains five. Fires to the left side inside the 30. 
zipped it in there, and they'll be first and ten for oh, uh, yeah, Oakland. All the conversions are happening in my brain. We get one more play here before the end of the third quarter. Bernal snaps it with three seconds left. Throws it to the left side. It'll be a completion of three yards as we end quarter number one. A couple of silver helmeted teams are tied at zero in an exciting, or after exciting, one exciting quarter. Did not say that cleanly. 34 yards to 20. Raiders have advantage in time of possession. It looked like it was going to be a methodical Patriots drive. They were kind of just picking up little chunks here and there until that fumble. Met in the backfield, but still gets away from a defender. Huge run off the left side. They should be able to get a first down before the end zone. So a total of eight chances to get the touchdown here if they can convert a first down. So first and 10 from the 12. Grinnell fires end zone, touchdown. Aaron's Mathis, the receiver, the, the defender did a terrific job breaking on the ball. And this was kind of similar to some of the plays we saw in the real NFL today. I thought that might've been a, an interception or at least a deflection we saw an incredible catch on the Jets side and on the Bengals side. They look like, uh, especially the catch on the Jets toward the end of that game, I thought was going to be, oh, that's an easy Minnesota interception or deflection on like a fourth down, but it was somehow a catch. The Bengals, because of the way the camera was, we saw the back of the Jets receiver. We saw the front side of the Bengals receiver. Somehow Joe Burrow zipped it in there on a fourth and or third and four or something like that. Such a good game. AFC is so exciting. I just, I keep going back to it. The AFC is the more exciting conference. Yes, Jalen Hurts. The Vikings have played great. That's awesome. AFC, the NFC South sucks. The NFC North sucks, minus the Vikings. The NFC West, kind of weird. NFC East is probably the most competitive, but I don't think has the level of like exciting quarterback play that Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Tua Tungavailola. I mean, that's five guys. It's a good time to be a football fan. Also, the Kansas City Chiefs had won like 26 games in a row in November and December, which is absurd. And that, uh, that streak came to a close today. A couple unnecessary sidesteps slows him down a little bit and allows the defender to tackle him at the 50. That was a terrific run. I mean, he has so much room. And that's what you like to see maybe uh, Donovan McDab do on some of those, those plays. Run out that left side, run out the right side. It's a run. Spin move, we're going to have another hold. Holden on the offense. I picked the right side? I did not. First and uh, 20, first penalty of the day. over to the receiver on the right side. Picks up half of it. A little more than half of it. They'll be into Raiders territory. Second down in what I will call reasonable. Trevor Lawrence got injured today. When are we gonna? No 
chance to get rid of the ball. The Lions got to give the quarterback a How long until Trevor Lawrence is a bust? I mean, do you kind of just punt that first season because Urban Meyer's an absolute sack of crap? Third down and 16. Patriots find a first down. That is a nice throw. Defender didn't make a great decision. It allowed the receiver to slip in behind him. And bam. That is a huge conversion. Third down and 16 is not something you should be giving up. Big conversion is uh, immediately followed by a loss of yards. Two minute warning here in the first half. Raiders lead seven nothing. It's been a long Patriots drive. Fake to the fullback, finds the running back. Oh, a terrific play. I like the design a lot. Play action pass to the fullback. You get a mismatch. Receiver, or a running back, excuse me, on... Oh, actually, it looked like a cornerback. Either way, a nice play. And it is uh, first and 10 as the clock moves. That is... <laughs> that should have been an interception. Oh my goodness, he jumped it perfectly and just could not come up with it. Maybe a little more work on the jugs this week, try and get, uh, get better at catching the ball. Throws into single coverage. I mean, it looked like a one-on-one. -on -one. The receivers were in a weird area. Testaverde threw that ball before he was ready to or probably wanted to with the pressure from the Oakland Raiders. Third down and long. Third and ten. Throws. Throws to the right side. Deflected incomplete. So we should see the field goal unit come out here on fourth and ten. Cut this down to a four-point game from the 19-yard line. Kick is good. Mike Hollis, the 35-yard field goal to make it a four-point game, 7-3. The drive covered 58 yards and took 11 plays. Penalty, the sack, and still able to get that uh, third and 16 conversion. Kind of a wild-looking drive chart right there. 117 remaining. Shout-out to the Master Chief. Nice run back here. He's up to the 30. Met by the kicker. And it'll be first and 10. Should be enough time to move down the field. They should have some timeouts as well. Probably a full allotment. It is indeed a full allotment. Big bomb down the left side. Caught. 
at the 20. That might be the best throw we've ever seen in this game. Right along the sideline, able to get feet inbounds. Watching hours of this game, and I mean hours of this game, a lot of it's just felt clunky. I mean, so there are 52 videos on the wall. Fifty videos. This is episode number fifty-one. Oh, it's picked off! Oh, the big play amounts to nothing, and Ty Law gets the interception on Mark Brunel, and then very slowly tried to get up to running back, and then just kind of got touched. The three game videos are about two and a half hours long, so that's ten episodes, which is twenty hours. We watched two thousand two for three hours of video. That was times twenty. I've watched this game for like 80 hours. That's a lot of time. Uh, it just seems... Oh my goodness, he gave it right back! Oh, Dexter Jackson with an 8-yard return off the pick. And it's just the, the animations are too big, or the momentum is weird, or the game just feels... It's just not... Not good enough. I think that's, you know, probably why they... I was hoping for more information on specifically why they discontinued the Xbox Sports Network. It's interesting that they sold it to Ubisoft. I mean, Ubisoft's not going to do anything with that at this point. But maybe they had bigger plans for it, but with the acquisition of the NFL license for uh, Madden exclusivity, maybe that threw a wrench in their plans. I wonder if maybe the game didn't make enough strides. And that's why that throw was so impressive. Like, it's so good because, I mean, how often do I talk about the punts? They're, they're too long. They don't corner them correctly. Decision-making doesn't make any sense. The, times, the number of times we see a, a running back just run right into an offensive line slash blocker, the kick return stuff doesn't make any sense the timeouts and there's no hurry up offense that was such a nice throw down the sideline it was like oh this could be a good game there's something here there's another nice throw by Brunel inside the 10-5 touchdown Ricky Waters his third reception of the day first touchdown averaging over 20 yards a catch so Brunel throws the interception the other guy, who I can't remember, Vinny Testaverde, that's his name, he immediately returns the favor. And Mark Brunel makes up for the mistake he made with a touchdown pass to Ricky Waters. A wild sequence of events. And it is now 14-3 Oakland in our second game of the day. Saw something similar in the first game with the, the immediate like interception to interception. Smith is back deep. There's the kickoff. Driven deep. I don't remember. Was that one? I think that one was just a field goal. Uh, like a field goal. Pass. Maybe it wasn't. I don't, I don't remember. Considering where they are, Kevin, they need to keep things real simple. Side deflected. Nice play by the Oakland Raiders defense there. Must have already looking for that kind of that quick out. But the incompletion sets up second and ten. A little extra pressure. The incomplete pass.
Third and 10 from the 17-yard line. Throws deep down the field, has a man, he's gonna be caught. He's off to the races inside the 10, five. Touchdown Patriots, Javon Walker. What in the heck is happening here? Finger guns all around. Got enough distance from the defender who just inexplicably slowed down. The drive covered 82 yards and took three wow. Points. Nothing, nothing. Big bomb. That'll make it a four point game again, 23 seconds before halftime. And that'll be a completed pass. They went for two, and they got it. So a three-point game, 14 to 11. Kind of weird that there was no camera operator there. Maybe, I don't know what that was supposed to be. I Galaxy brain thinking over here. anticipate the Patriots going for two there. I mean, it's a smart call. I like the call. Give yourself that opportunity to tie it with a field goal. Run off the left side. Tries to find a little bit of room. Gains a yard, maybe two. Probably just see the clock run out here. No reason for Oakland to take a timeout if they're just going to run the ball before half. But at that point, it's also kind of like, why are you bothering to run it and just take a knee? <laughs> Get out of here. Well, an exciting final two minutes of that sees uh, at least two touchdowns scored. 15 points combined. A couple interceptions, some big plays. We have, a, we have a tight game here in game number two. For some reason, I don't know why I thought they were going to give an onside kick. I was so confused there. He kicks it. Kick is away. Grab the old phone, make sure I'm not missing anything important. Just in case. First and ten. Ooh, Jimmy Garoppolo out for the season. The 49ers continue to put up just like absurd elite defenses and they cannot catch a break from a quarterback standpoint. Five from the 19. Finds a man over the middle. Javon Walker with his third reception. Right now the 
37 yard average. The big 83 yard catch before the uh, end of the half. False start here. We sure do. Yeah. Ten game happening right now. Second down and eighteen. Oh my goodness! Another loss. Oh, I think he called for a false start too. I, I forgot about that. Test of already gets sacked for another four. A well, third and what? Twenty-two at this point. Third and 23. The Oakland defense has already given up a third and 16, but they will hold on third and 23. And they'll get the ball back for their first possession of the second half. Patriots took like half that quarter for nothing. Turn from the 32 yard line. Went left for no reason. Just stay up the right side. 46 yard punt. And not much of a return. A, a poor return decision by Oakland. It'll be first and 10 from the 41 yard line. I think I said the 33 when I should have said the 38. 37, 38. Either way, good starting field position for the Raiders. Brunel drops back, fires into a lot of traffic, maybe tipped at the line. Either way, it's incomplete. Patriots, the pretty nice advantage in the time of possession category. Unfortunately, couldn't come away with any points on their last possession to try and tie this game. Brunel, right on the Raiders logo. Should be a first and ten for Oakland. Nice to positioning by the defender.
sacked in the backfield. Antonio Pierce, second sack of the day, three tackles. That's a pretty deep drop for Mark Brunel. Fourth and 14. Defense is playing well here in this third quarter. How? How? How are we not getting any blocked punts? I feel like there should be 47 of them a game. Loss of three on the play by New England, second down and uh, even longer than 10. Second and 14. Throws over the middle. Finds a completion for Probably about half of it. We have a three-point game heading into the fourth quarter. A quiet third quarter. Uh, defense is one out, and the time of possession was pretty even. A couple of clock-milking drives that didn't do a whole lot. The Patriots have a two-minute advantage in time of possession. There's a strong possibility that the Oakland Raiders started the second half with possession, and I just totally missed it. Just completely and totally missed it. Third down in seven, so they got exactly half on second and 14. He'll find a receiver who leaps for the ball six yards down the field, but he needed seven. You gotta know where the sticks are. It's gotta be a better throw from Testaverde as well. Try and give his receiver an opportunity to make a move, make a man miss, instead of having to go up for it. And completely kill his momentum. Third down and inches. Trust the defense, you only need three. Raiders with a fair catch. Big hole up the middle. He's going to get that is a large gain on first down. Not what you want to see. If you're, uh, if you're a Patriots fan, eight yard gain, second down and two offset eye coming up for the Raiders. Four minutes to go here in the game. and finds a wide open receiver at midfield slowed him down just enough for the second defender to get the tackle they're in Patriots territory Ty Law again called his name a couple of times today to his left, fires back across the field, which is a huge no-no. Second 11 from the 47-yard line, so all of that for lots of one. As a key to McCardell, was that the receiver that I was going to call out? Hey, he's good. Oh, do we have a huge holding penalty on the Raiders? 
Oh, I guess wrong again. It is. That is a big penalty. Second down and 21. Just what the Patriots need. Nice spin move. He'll get around the original line of scrimmage. So third down and very long. That's a, such a big conversion. The Patriots had everything that they needed. Oh, they had the big long second down. Gave up a few yards on the that con, on that convert or, uh, on that play. What a disaster! Two minutes to go here. Three timeouts. It's not done yet. Pitch to the left side. Ricky Waters makes a man miss. Or can't make the second man miss. Timeout. A little bit of spin move magic happening there. Second time out. Are the Raiders in field goal range? I would say yes, but I say that most of the time because their punters are so terrible. Third down and six. Minute 46 to go. This is the game. Patriots need to stop, and they will get it in the best way possible. It's an interception, but again, the animation takes too long. Jeff Burris uh, makes his first interception of the day. I think the second interception for the Raiders, maybe the third. But the last couple have been these, these nice picks that they take so long to get through the animation process. They're not able to advance upfield. We saw it with the Ty Law one. It's just very slow getting up. Just kind of a bulky game. That is, that is incredible. You figure Oakland comes away with at least a field goal. Threw the ball a little bit before he wanted to. The pressure applied by the Oakland defense. Wow. Please stop. God, I hate that. I hate when that happens to the camera. Fires left side, finds a receiver out of bounds at about the 35 yard line. First and 10. to the left side, finds a receiver. Could to initiate contact with that defender who just right to the forehead at the 50 yard line. Shaping up to be a fantastic finisher. I feel like it's rare that we get two games that are like this good in the, in the same week. Maybe even rarer that we even get one. A minute and six to go. He's going to be sacked for a loss. There's a 
music. My goodness. It's loud. Someone turn that racket down. Clock is moving under 40 seconds to go here by the time they snap that ball. Second and 16, they need 30 yards. Testaverde for some reason running the ball. I, it's like I said, wow, we got a good game and then they just decided, no thanks. You don't get good games here. It's not how this works. Some garbage. Third down and 17 from the 42. No timeouts. I dislike everything about that play. Absolutely horrendous. We'll even skip the animations for him. So I can at least have a shot at it. Fourth down. This is it. Six, five, you gotta go, New England. Three, two, one. They get the ball off just in time. Throws down the middle of the field. He's gonna get the catch, but they needed that one play earlier. One play earlier. 14 to 11, your final. The Raiders emerge victorious. After a pretty wild final two minutes of the first half, much quieter second half. Got a little exciting there towards the end, but... The Raiders will pick up win number seven. And the Patriots will drop to six and four. How will that affect the playoffs or the playoff picture? You will just have to stick around. We got one more game for you. Sam Cowart, Cowart, player of the game, five tackles, two sacks. Here's your highlight reel. Nice diving interception. There's the Ty Law one I was talking about. Just so long to get up. Couldn't advance it. The big touchdown for New England to make it. 14 to nine. And the Patriots could not have had a better, a better final opportunity. They gave up the big, couple of big plays on second and like 21 and third and pretty long. The Patriots outgained them by 60 yards and still lost. Had time of possession, more first downs, two turnovers for each side. My goodness. My goodness gracious, what a fantastic game that was. And we have one more for you. That's hopefully just as good as those last two. A couple of AFC South teams playing against each other. Houston taking on Jacksonville. I will let you enjoy the start of that game and I'll, be, uh, I'll join you in progress. Welcome to Reliant Stadium, everybody, where it's a soggy 55 degree. Kevin Palazzo above the field, and we're here to watch this regular season matchup. The Texans will take on the Jaguars. Who will we be watching tonight, Ron? He's one of the league's top defensive backs. He's some of the opposing wide receivers keep track of before the snap. They make sure they know where he's lined up at all times. Jim Miller is not the most talented quarterback in the league, but he is a gamer. He understands his role in the game plan and assumes command in the heat of battle. He knows how to ring out the most of the offense. Thanks, Ron. And now to midfield for the toss of the coin. The visiting captain will make the call. Captain, what's your choice? He calls ten. It is Terrence. The visiting team won the toss and elects to receive. We're set to go for the opening kickoff. And we are underway. Poole gets the ball. Brings it upfield. Reaches the ball. And taken down near the 24. First 
to ten. Back just in time to see the starting lineups as a grease train green war done. Flynn, he's a recognizable face. He looks so gosh darn arm I don't think we've seen Houston for quite a while. Actually surprised that they have uh, have a winning record. And a pretty competitive AFC South. Woodson on the back end. Punch the table with my hand on accident. Houston since like we've gone. Boy, he didn't get a lot. And the defense made him fight for that. That is wild. Second and seven. Second down and seven. So Jacksonville back in week number nine. Play action pass. There's a receiver right at the sticks. Makes a nice move to get a couple extra yards. Backs here in the backfield for Jacksonville. Oh man. I thought that was going to be a nice game. Maybe meet that other defender, try and break a tackle, and just keep going upfield. But good job shedding the block and making a move there on the Texas Texans, excuse me, defensive line. Rolls to his right, fires back across his body. Receiver has a step and he'll get tackled at the five. First and goal for Jacksonville. This is like the most dangerous throw back across your body. I don't know if that really qualifies. I mean, it's still over the middle of the field. Looking away from it. Everything about that throw screams, this is a bad idea. It worked out for Jacksonville this time around. Play-action pass and destroyed in the backfield at the 10-yard line. Second and goal coming up. A great play. A great play call by the Houston Texans. Well executed. And that rusher off the edge. And Trent Green had no time to try and get that ball away. Or out.
Has to find some room outside of or uh, in the flat, I should say. Nothing doing. Another good Texans stop. Third and goal from the 11. Rose and it's deflected. Not really sure what happened there. It's an incomplete pass, and they will, they will settle for a field goal attempt. The Jaguars will try for three here. It's up, and it is good. It's David Akers one for one with about a little, little more than an extra point there. Look at that drive. Run, run, run. A couple of passes. Maybe a stick to the ground game next time. So a 3 nothing game here with 30, 35 seconds to go. A yard deep in the end zone. He'll get up to the 15 to the 20 before he is wrestled down at the 23-yard line. First and 10 for the Texans coming up. And we are getting the starting lineup. So that was a four and a half minute drive. Jay Miller, a name I do not, do not recognize, leading this uh, Texans squad to a winning record. I think I shouldn't say that was such a. I think they're both five and four. But I was away from my uh, setup when that screen or when that image went off. So look at your Jacksonville defense. Ronnie Harrison. and throws a nice strike to the right side. No gain. And we have reached the end of the first quarter. A 3 nothing lead for the Jacksonville Jaguars. The only thing uh, not performing well here is the audio so far. We played one quarter and the score is the Jaguars 3, the Texans nothing. Third and six from the 27 yard line. Oh, it's all down there. Looking for an escape route. Swings it left. Swings it to the left side. Don't love that play. Or decision, I guess. We hold on to it for just a smidge longer. Try and get him to go up the field. We saw that be effective in the last game we watched. So Jacksonville has it for four minutes, 25 seconds. And Houston has it for a minute, maybe. Not even, that's like 45 seconds. to step up in the pocket, finds a receiver on the left side with a couple of steps on his defender. Trent Green with a nice completion, and just like that, they're in Texans territory. Here's 
first and ten. Off to the right side, close lined at the 40 yard line. Gain of three on the play, so second down and seven coming up. Second and seven. Just to find some room off that right side and find a beautiful run. 10 yards. Down to the 30-yard line. Turn around, hand the ball off, just keep going. You saw the saw the drive chart last time with the field goal. Their success was on the ground. The red run it. I think they went three straight pass attempts in the in the red zone or uh, from the for the in the goal to go situation. I think they went three straight pass attempts. Sack, loss of a yard, incompletion, something like that. Of course, right as I say, hey, maybe don't throw the ball. They throw the ball for a nice completion. from the 16-yard line. And again, Jacksonville with a, just a really methodical drive. A couple of big plays. Float pass to the right side. It'll be tackled inbounds inside the 10 or at the 10-yard line. It'll be third down and three, I believe. Jacksonville is taking their time, but they're doing what they need to do to move the chains. Do we get one more play on this side of the two-minute warning? Maybe it's going to be close, and we will not. Because of that motion, you can see Trent Green with his left leg kick back as in, hey, let's see if we can figure out what kind of coverage they're working with with a little bit of motion across the formation. Two receiver split to the left side of your screen. Split backs. They're going to hand it to the right side back, and he should have gone left. He has the first down if he stays left, but he tried to bounce it to the right where there were two Houston Texans defenders waiting. Very poor decision by the running back on that one. We're going to hold it for the next 30 seconds. So it'll be interesting to see the split in the time of possession. It's going to be heavily favoring the Jacksonville Jaguars. Eight minutes to maybe two. And probably going to be more lopsided than that. This is something I'm happy to see in the game because they have a lot of clock mismanagement in the last one. Led to some bizarre endings. Kick is up. Kick is good. So the Texans playing a little bit of a bend but don't break defense. We saw the Jets do that earlier today. The, drive covered the, the Lions, I can't remember. Crap. What was the? F yeah, the first game. I think it was Detroit. No, it was the Jets. The Jets played the bend but don't break defense because they had two. The Lions had two field goals. Yeah. Didn't work out in the long run because they ended up losing that game. Still not a terrible way to to do it. We have a fast-paced first half. Jacksonville's uh, been successful. They've been running the ball. They're even when they're passing, they're getting tackled in bounds. That clock is churning, and Houston didn't do anything with it last time. So we'll see. 104 to go here.
Throws. Tipped in incomplete. <laughs> that took like two seconds, maybe three. Defender had a had a read on that, played it pretty well, but just could not come down with the catch. Another very quick incompletion. You're looking at about an eight second drive at the moment. And another incompletion. Well played again by the Jacksonville defense. So that might be a 12, 13 second drive. And they're gonna give the ball back with 52 seconds left. That's actually maybe even 11. It is hard for me to believe that the Texans have a winning record. Ow. Of course their defense is playing okay enough to you know hold them to field goals. Keep their team in striking distance. side don't love the decision there again I love throwing to the receiver in the flat I like that idea we try and let him get up the field just a little bit trying to get a step on the defender twenty seconds to go this is gonna be even more skewed than I thought it was gonna be initially I would be surprised if the Texans have had a ball had the ball for a minute in this game my guess is like 45 seconds. First half comes to a close. Jacksonville just milked the clock the entire time. Maybe that's their strategy. Six nothing, Jacksonville. Half number one comes to a close. Quick peek at the stats here. Take a look at what you like. Nine minutes to a minute and two seconds. I don't like the way that that's displayed, those stats, because it's attempt and then made. It should be 0 for 2, like 0 dash 2, not 2 dash 0. Does it make any sense? pass throws finds a receiver there's a nice play Maybe first and 10 at the 33 yard line good roll nice find receiver coming back to the ball and this this game clock gets to the minute 50 set or uh, 350 mark they'll have doubled their time of possession in one drive Down the ball there. He picked up 15 yards on the 
nice, but he's gonna get. He needs soda all over. Out of this can? What the hell? Am I crazy? Am I losing it? Rolling, fires, big rainbow pass. That one should have been intercepted. Again, well played by the defender. Good timing on the jump. Just unable to come out, uh, come away with the ball. It looked like he wasn't even trying for it. Just a, just a bat down there. He has the ball. That is a huge hole on the left side. Slips out of a tackle there, and he is inside the ten. Right at the 10, excuse me, I got a little ahead of myself. Wow, that was a nice run. Houston making some nice adjustments. You can see the spin move there. Simultaneously made two guys miss on one move. Basically every player's dream is they just mash the B button. The computer does. Just keep spinning. Somebody will miss eventually. So it will be first and goal from the 10 yard line. Pitch to the right. Makes a man miss. Puts his shoulder down. There's a nice pitch to the left side. Oh, a beautiful move. Beautiful move to get into the end zone. Four attempts, 50 yards. That is a... Wow. Wow. 79-yard drive. Good chunk of time in that third quarter, and that's going to give Houston the lead. Maybe this is Houston's game. Bend but don't break defense. Make some adjustments at halftime. And bam, just like that, you're looking at a, a lead, a one-point lead. Ball teed up for the kickoff. There's the kickoff. It's caught. Starts up field. Pass the clock. Taken down at the 27-yard line. Not a bad run back at all. Come on. Cowboys lead the Colts 21-13 at halftime. The Lions won big over the Jaguars today. Tries to run up the middle, but the defender stayed put and made the play. Most of the time, it's because your offensive line got beat at the point of attack. That's a nice find. Unnecessary spin move. We get stopped at the 35-yard line, but it's, uh, I don't think it's going to be enough. Nice pass and catch by the offense. Third down. Okay, <laughs> they have another shot at it. Still should have had the first down on that last play. Nice find over the middle. There's a spin move that makes a man miss. Trent Green's 9 for 10 for 85 yards. He'll be right around midfield. Green is shredding the defense. Completing better than 
percent of his passes. First and ten. Right up the right up the gut there. Jacksonville getting back to what they did so well in the first half. Just take what the defense gives you. Five yards here, six yards there. Move the chains, get tackled in bounds, and let that clock turn on down. One minute to go here in the third quarter. A second down and four with a single back set. Throws over the middle, finds a receiver who's hit immediately at the 37-yard line. First down and 10 following that completion. pass there inside the 30 down to the 27 it's gonna be right at that first down marker they'll measure it and he will be clear of it by a football first down and 10 20 seconds to go with the third quarter Jacksonville approaching field goal range likely will be the last play of quarter number three he's barring any sort of incompletion Kevin Hardy doing a nice job today five tackles in the game. Trent Green continues to have a high completion percentage. End of quarter number three, seven, six. Big drive by the Texans to start the third quarter, but the Jaguars are driving. 11.49 to 3.05. That is a wild difference. I would be surprised if we saw a more lopsided time of possession. We've seen them lopsided before, but 11 minutes to three minutes with five minutes left. Whoo, that is a lot. They're down in four, a rare clock stoppage here. Pitch to the left side, bed in the backfield, makes a man miss, but the second guy gets there and drops him for a loss of four. Whoo, not a great play. Still in field goal range though, and Houston does uh, what they've done so well throughout this game, linebacker. Uh, bend, but don't break. I'll take the field goal attempt, I'm sure. Fourth down and nine. It is good. So three for three on field goals. Hopefully you have him on your random rosters fantasy team. Four twenty-three to go here in the fourth quarter. First and ten. Big sack to start that drive for the Jacksonville defense. Second down and long coming up. It's about to get rid of it, but. And the uh, sack animation, I guess, canceled out the regular animation? Not really sure. There's a marker on the field. 
Marksman against the defense. They're gonna give the five, they're gonna give them five of those six yards back. So second down and eleven after the mistake on the offensive line. Also, I believe it's gonna stop the clock. It does, interestingly enough. Rainbow pass tipped again by a Jacksonville defender. Third down and 11. Houston's got to get something going here because if you give the ball back to Jacksonville, they might just take the rest of the time off the clock. Rolls, fires, and a nice defensive play there. Looked like he might have had it. It looked good for a second, but the window closed quickly. A couple of punts for Moore here. He'll start his return. Just kidding. He'll fair catch it at the 31 and a half yard line. So 3.43 to go. Nice find, and there's a there's a great play on a play action fake. First and ten from midfield. Oh, a nice run off the left side. Jacksonville is feeling it here. Houston's, I mean, obviously not out of it yet. If they can hold them to yet another field goal. We can give their offense a shot. Offense has only engineered one drive, though. The clock winds under three minutes to go. Pitches it to the runner. Oh, and not great on the defensive side there. Trying to set the edge, try to force him back inside, but both receivers did a good job to turn their guys inside toward the middle of the field and allowed the, uh, the running back to get a few extra yards. First and 10 from the 22, just keep feeding the ball to the running backs. Dirty jerseys and all go with another run. Left side this time, they're bouncing it back and forth. A 10 yard gain, first down yet again. For some reason saying first down from the 50 yard line instead of Right next to the chains, I'm sure that's been a thing all season long or entire series long, but just now noticed it for whatever reason. Approaching the two minute warning, last play on this side of the two minute warning is a stop for no game. Good job up front by the defense. Now that is how you play the run. That's the two minute warning. Two minutes left to play in this game. Second and ten. Spin move for no reason. Tried to break it back to the right side, but nothing really doing there. Timeout. They got that two-minute warning, so they have an extra. They get kind of a de facto extra timeout. Wow, Texans again, bending but not breaking. Three for three. The kick's away. And good as money. Nice job by the kicker. 
All right, 12-7, Houston still in this one. Their defense doing a hell of a job. The drive covered 52 yards and took eight plays. And that time the running game just totally sputtered inside the inside the red zone. From the two up to the 15, to the 20, falls forward toward the 25. It'll be first and 10 for Houston with a timeout. Touchdown wins it. Down and 10 completion for seven. Houston off to a good start, but they need bigger chunks than that. Got to get a touchdown here. I'll give them eight yards on that. Play action pass, looks, looks, fires over the middle, and it's deflected by the Jacksonville defense. Finds a receiver at the 40. He's going to be tripped up. That'll be a first and 10 for Houston. Jacksonville just, you can take a few yards here and there. Why? Why, why are we doing this? Why is this? That is so annoying. This game def desperately, I should say, needs a hurry up offense. Throws it down the middle of the field. It is a lot of Jacksonville defenders in the area. Only one Houston offensive uh, or a Houston receiver. Looked like a couple of other Houston players were kind of in the vicinity, but broke off to give him a clearer shot at the ball. But there were five Jaguars. Twenty-three seconds, sixty yards from Pater. The Jaguars got four down line. Close. Oh, right down the seam. It's gonna be a catch, and he'll be down near the thirty. There we go. We'll see a timeout. So we can uh, we can let this stuff play out. Timeout called by the home squad. They have no timeouts left. Four field goals is all the Jaguars could muster with long, methodical drives consistently throughout this game. Well, that's, uh, that is a good deflection. That's a good deflection, not just for Jacksonville, but for Houston as well. What are you doing throwing the ball that short? No awareness of anything else is happening. If that's a completed pass, it's game over. It's end zone or bust here for the Houston Texans. That is uh, not a good play. We'll kind of try and skip everything we can here. At least give them a shot. And it won't. It like just took 10 seconds off the clock. Well, there you go. 
We've seen it consistently throughout because this game just does not have great clock management. There's no hurry up. That was such a welcome change from uh, or when we hit Madden. But hey, that's how it goes. Houston, they can only muster the one scoring drive, but that's that last drive was looking promising. Defense did its job, held Jacksonville to four field goals. 14 minutes of time of possession to 529, 221 yards. No turnovers for either side. And a pretty good game, a very competitive game. I think as that game went on, you can kind of see why Houston has the record that they have. I believe they're going to be 5-5 five and five after that game. But, uh, you know, get a defense that keeps you in the game. Get one or two scoring drives. Maybe a turnover. I don't know. Maybe that's how maybe that's how you do it. We'll go ahead and sim this week for you. We'll get you scores. We'll get you standings. And uh, we'll get you kind of kind of set for uh, for next week's stuff. Um, some a lot of those are three rivalry games. You got a Lions Bears. Vikings Patriots. My mom would like that game. All right. Week 11, though, went like this. The Cardinals. The Battle of the Birds took out the Eagles 10-6. Dolphins all over the Ravens 35-17. Chiefs knock out the Bills 23-6. Drew Bledsoe just doesn't do well when we broadcast him. Because I believe Bledsoe's on the Kansas City team. And a couple of the Bills games we saw towards the end of last season were not great. Bengals over the Browns by 10, 24-14. Cowboys beat the Colts in a game that is actually happening right now. 31-10. Vikings smothered the Packers 33 to six Packers down there starting quarterback Falcons beat the Saints 12 10 Steelers over the Titans 27 three Giants 35 Washington 10 25 point blowout in favor of the New York G men Panthers and Bucks in an NFC NFC South matchup winners the Buccaneers 38 to 17. Chargers beat the 49ers by four. I was actually thinking about broadcasting this game, but I elected not to. Seahawks beat the Broncos 27-13. We saw the Jaguars beat the Texans 12-7. We also watched the Lions beat the Jets 15-14. And the Raiders took out the Patriots 14-11. When the most lopsided game we had was five points, 12-7, you know you picked some good games today. And they were very good games. Last but not least, the Bears all over the Rams. 30 to 7. Standings look like this. The Cardinals make their way to eight wins in the top of the NFL. NFC playoff picture has the Cardinals in the West, Falcons in the South, Packers in the North, Cowboys in the East. Uh, the 49ers would be the five, and the Buccaneers would be a six. The Lions would just miss out on the playoffs at six and four, should this um, standing be like accurate. Giants on the outside, Saints on the outside. Looking in, Saints have that nasty tie. Eagles, Seahawks, Bears. See what I mean? Like, still a lot of teams just kind of like stuck at four. On the AFC side of things, the Raiders and Chargers, seven and three. We'll have to keep an eye out and see if these two teams meet up. Could def uh, could decide the AFC West, and could decide the number one seed in the playoffs. The second place team would be relegated to the fifth spot. The Bengals would have the number two seed, the Colts, AFC South, and then, let's see, the Patriots in the East, and then you would have the Chargers. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm incorrect here. So you have AFC West. So one, two, three, four, and then... Uh, Chargers and Jaguars, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Yep. Ravens would just miss at five and five and the Jets, Chiefs, Texans all at five and five. So these will be some teams we'll keep an eye on the Patriots, Jaguars with a big win today, uh, and the Colts. Those will be teams to keep an eye on. Obviously the AFC West. Uh, will be interesting to watch as well. So the AFC, AFC pretty crowded. NFC is getting some separation there. 
You have the Lions would be the team to keep an eye on. Maybe the Giants. As for your uh, divisional standings, the Cowboys lead at 7-3 in the NFC East. The Giants trail at 5-5. Five and five. Eagles and Washington are at 4 and 6. The Patriots are 6 and 4 and they lead the AFC East over the Jets at 5 and 5. Bills and Dolphins at 4 and 6. A couple of teams with a tie, the Falcons and the Saints. Falcons lead 7-2 and 1. The Buccaneers trail at 6 and 4. The Saints are 4-5 and 1 and the Panthers are a lowly 2 and 8. Colts and Jaguars lead the AFC South at 6 and 4. Texans, they lose that game and slip to 5 and 5 and the Titans not too far out of it at 4 and 6. NFC West has the Cardinals ahead 8 and 2, 49ers 7 and 3 and the rest of the division falling apart at 4 and 6 for the Seahawks, 1 and 9 for the Rams. The AFC West is tied atop the division, as you know, Raiders, Chargers, 7-3. and three. The Chiefs, not too far out of it, but fading fast, 5-5. Five and five. The Broncos have not been competitive the last two times we've done this. 3-7 and seven now in this game. The NFC North has the Packers at 7-3. and three. The Lions, I don't think they took advantage. No, they didn't because we watched that game. I apologize. Lions couldn't take advantage of it. They fall to 6-4 and four and remain in spot number two in this division. The Vikings and the Bears. Both four and six. And the AFC North has the Bengals at six and four. The Ravens right behind them at five and five. The Steelers right behind them at four and six. And the Browns at two and eight. So that is, uh, that's how it's looking. As we head into week number 12, uh, we can take a couple, we can take a gander at some of this stuff. The Falcons, the Panthers are not good. Bill's Jets could be interesting. Um... Lions, Bears, eh. Vikings, Patriots, no. Chargers, Dolphins. Ah, do okay, Chargers. That's the team I want to actually take a quick peek at. Oh, Chargers, Broncos. Uh, Raiders, ooh, Raiders, Chargers, week 14. Week 14, that could be a good one. Got to get through two more weeks, though, and hopefully it's still uh, still competitive. Anyway, um, hey, I'll, uh, here's all the matchups for the week. If you see anything you like, let me know down in the comments below. And we, uh, we might take a look at it. We'll see. Hopefully there's some, uh, some high rankings or high standings teams that are playing each other. I remember part of the problem last season when we got to this point was a lot of the good teams were playing really bad teams. And there wasn't like good versus good and bad, bad versus bad. It's kind of just, it was uh, spread across. Either way, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. I have a great time making them, and uh, hopefully you have a great time watching them. If you want more, be sure to scroll down, subscribe, ring that bell. You'll be notified when I post new videos, and you'll help me get to uh, the goal of 1,500 subscribers. Uh, through, hopefully by the end of the year. It is December, so we are getting kind of close on that one. And obviously, if you keep watching, I'll keep making. So thank you again so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on NFL Fever 2003 next Tuesday with Week 12 action coming right at you. Goodbye.